it was fourth period, which for us was the end of the day because we did block schedule. And it was Valentine's Day, so we were writing Valentine's Day cards. Um, we were reading Romeo and Juliet, so they were pretending to write cards to each other as if they were characters. And we were having so much fun until um, I heard what I described as just the loudest noise you could possibly imagine um, going directly into my hallway. Um, and when that happened, everything was just happening very quick in my classroom. A student made sure the door was shut. We shut the lights off. My students went into corners. I had some with me behind my desk. Almost instantly, I called 911, just out of instinct. Um, they couldn't hear me over the sound of the gunshots. It was so incredibly loud. Um, and that was it. We just hid under my desk. We hid in the corners, and we tried to stay as quiet as possible until um, what I heard was like a walkie-talkie type of sound. and. To me, that's what a police sounds like. So I peeked over my desk and I saw them in uniform and they signaled us to wait um, until it was time to leave. And that's when they signaled us out and we made an immediate right out of my building. Okay. Did any shots come into your classroom? No. Was anyone shot in your classroom? No. So uh, these loud you heard. It just wouldn't stop. I, I like I don't have an absolute correct number or an accurate number that I could count. It just kept going and going and going. Did all these uh, bangs have the same degree of loudness or did they dissipate or appear anywhere else in the building? They were incredibly loud. Um, the ones that were outside of my classroom, it's like you could just feel it within your body. like all throughout your chest. Um, when he was upstairs, you could tell they were faded, but they were just as just as loud where you still knew they were gunshots happening throughout the building. Okay. And how many how long did you wait before the you heard the walkie talkie mm -hmm. and the police said, Hold on, we'll get you? I don't have an accurate like remembrance of time, it it felt like a long time being there with my students under there. Um, I don't remember what time it was. Okay. And when you left, how did you leave? Um, we exited directly right of my classroom, which was the there's an entrance exit door there. The east entrance toward Pine Island. Yeah. Okay. And you made a 911 call. I did. And what time did you make that 911 call? So when I heard the first gunshot, it was probably seconds or maybe even a minute after, okay. around 2.22. Okay. Uh, and have you heard that 9-11 call since then? Mm-hmm, yeah. Let me show you State's Exhibit Mark C for identification. Let me ask you if you can identify this total drive here. Yeah. Okay, and you've heard this disc? Mm-hmm. Is that a guess? Yes. Yes. Uh, you guys know what this is? The no, 911 call? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Any objection? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when all first states exhibit C, please remember. Okay, without objection, states exhibit C for identification will be received as states exhibit 4. And I'd like to play it. Okay. Thank you. Hello, we're at Stoneman Douglas High School, and I think there's a shooter. Hello? You still there? 
Talk to me, please. And those were the bangs that you heard in the beginning of the call, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Sinich. Thank you. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Okay. Any questions? Okay. No, thank you. <coughs> okay. No questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Danielle Gilbert, please. Thank you, Mr. Excused. Incredible emotion there by the first witness in this penalty phase for the Parkland school shooter, Nicholas Cruz. That was teacher at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, also a former st student, Brittany Sinich, just describing those hor horrifying moments and then calling 911. And then we heard that 911 call. We're going to take a quick break, but you're not going to miss a thing. We're going to bring you back in when we're leaving off here on Core TV Live. America's Value Destination. Welcome back to Court TV Live. We continue our coverage of the penalty phase for convicted Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. Now, we just heard from the first witness on the stand, a teacher who called 911 when that shooting happened. On the stand next is a student, Danielle Gilbert. She was a junior at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School on the day of that deadly massacre. So let's go back into court. You're not missing a thing. Here's right where we left off. Your last name for the record. Danielle Gilbert, G-I-L-B-E-R-T. State, you may inquire. And uh, Ms. Gilbert, good afternoon. So what do you do for a living? Or what? Oh, I'm a student right now. I'm yeah. in UCI. Okay. All right. I, I w normally I would start out by asking your age, but you're out of school now, so I don't want to get anywhere near there. So you're in school, right? Yes. Where do you go to school? Uh, University of Central Florida in Orlando. Okay. What year are you in? I'm going to be a senior this fall. Okay. I'd like to call your attention to February uh, the 14th, 2018. Do you remember, uh, were you in school then? Yes. And where were you in school? Um, I was at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Okay. And on February the 14th, 2018, what year were you in? I was a junior. Okay. I'd like to call your attention to that day, that Wednesday. Do you remember your fourth period? Yes. Okay. What time does school start then on that day? At uh, 7.40 a.m. Okay. And the last class ends at what time? 2.40 Okay. So your fourth period was what? Uh, AP Psychology. And who was your teacher? Ms. Ray Oven. And what classroom were you in? 12.13. Okay. So uh, during fourth period, would you please tell us what happened? Yeah. So um, at the beginning of fourth period, when it was just started, we were in the middle of a lecture, as per usual. And um, we were all seated in our desk, listening to Ms. Ray Oven um, give her lecture in the front of the classroom. Um, and in the middle of her lecture, we heard um, the first couple of shots. And from there, we dropped to the ground and started towards, uh, started running towards the window. Um, however, our teacher realized that by the window was right in view of where the uh, window was in the door um, and so she had realized that and told us to come behind her desk where we were out of sight of the window. What kind of window was that? Um, it was a small rectangular window in the, in the door. Okay. And so what do you do? And so once she uh, tells us to go ahead over to her side of the desk where we're out of sight, we immediately turn around and um, all 31, 32 of us go over to the, that side of the classroom. Okay. And then, then what time does class start, the fourth period? 90-minute class? It's, yeah, it's an hour and a half class. An hour and a half, so like 110? Sounds about right. I don't remember exactly. Okay. okay. But you know it ends at 240? Yes, it does. Okay. So tell us what happens after you go uh, near Ms. Uh, Riovan's desk. So uh, then we go over to the other side of the classroom by her desk. Um, and at this time, he still hadn't shot into our classroom at that point. We were um, just sitting, kind of like sitting ducks. Um, we had no way to protect ourselves, no way to stand up for ourselves. And um, once we were all kind of in over by the um, door and away from the door, that's when he had shot into our classroom. Um, he injured four people in my classroom, uh, one of them um, being fatal. Um, and from there, we just kind of sat and waited until the police came and took us out of the classroom. Okay. And who did you see that was injured? Um, Benjamin Wakander, Samantha Mayer, 
um, Madeline Wilford and um, Carmen Shenchup had passed away. Okay. And were you near any of them? Um, not in particular. They were more towards the podium and by the whiteboard, and I was more towards the door. Okay. And did you do anything to record what was, what was occurring? Yes. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but my initial instinct was to pick up my phone and start recording. Um, and so I did. I took several videos of what was happening. Um, yeah. Okay. And did you retain those recordings? Yes. And did you turn them over to the authorities? Yes. Okay. And have you viewed those videotapes since? Yes. Okay. Let me show you Stacey Exhibit Mark D for identification and ask you to take a look at this drive, uh, Ms. Gilbert, and see if you can identify her. Yeah. And uh, are your seven videos contained on there? Yes, they are. And did you initial this to I did. say it was the same, one and the same? Yes. Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit D. Is there any objection? Yes, Judge, we have some. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so as they're in a sidebar, we're going to take a quick break here on Court TV. But what we're following, again, just to recap for our viewers, this is the sentencing phase, the penalty phase for convicted Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. He already pleaded guilty to killing 17. But now the jury here is determining whether he should get life in prison or death. We're going to continue our coverage right here on Court TV. Welcome back to Court TV Live. We continue our coverage in Florida of the sentencing phase for convicted Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. Uh, now, we just want to explain there's a sidebar going on right now. When we left off, there was a second witness who was already on the stand. This is a student who is testifying. Uh, and we previously heard from a teacher who called 911. She was there when that shooting happened. But just a reminder, we had some questions from the viewers. Why is there a trial when Nicholas Cruz already convicted um, was convicted and, and pleaded guilty to killing 17 people. Well, this is to determine his sentence. Should he get life in prison or should he get the death penalty? So as that sidebar is underway, I want to bring in our guest analyst for this hour, criminal defense attorney Greg Isaacs and former prosecutor, criminal defense attorney, host of the Diva Court podcast, Marsha Minot, joining us. Um, so just to kind of explain for our viewers, there have been many sidebars and, and there probably will be many sidebars as this penalty phase gets underway uh, just you know big picture why is it important to have these discussions about perhaps what evidence is admissible and what evidence is not admissible Marsha well you still have a duty as defense counsel to make sure that the evidence and the rules of evidence are complied with no matter what section of the trial you're in, if it's the penalty phase or the guilt phase. I am certain that this disagreement might be about the audio recordings or video recordings of this witness and defense counsel may be concerned regarding authentication and or whether or not it's more prejudicial than probative for the jurors to see what she recorded. And, and, and Greg, what do you think, uh, you know, obviously we can't hear the discussion um, and, and that's not allowed in this case, but what do you think the discussion might go like? Well, first of all, you, you, you look at it in the context of a capital sentencing phase of a, a homicide trial. And, you know, back to your viewer's question, basically you have two trials. You would have a guilt and innocence phase. But in this case, there was a guilty plea. Now we are in the ultimate trial, whether uh, the jury isn't going to impose a sentence of death. So if you're defense counsel, you want to preserve every conceivable objection for the record uh, without doing so in a way that's inappropriate, that would alienate the jury. I, I agree that it's probably a, a what we call a 403 objection, that uh, it's prejudicial. Uh, that the prejudicial impact would outweigh the evidence if it is probative. And one thing I would be vigilant if I was defense counsel, as you're, you're fighting this tsunami of evidence that you're going to hear as they walk us through uh, this rampage on Valentine's Day, uh, is to make sure that the prosecution uh, doesn't keep doing this over and over and over. Um, but from you know the technical difficulties we keep seeing in the sidebars, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, does this actually capture video of the actual shooting, or is this audio? But obviously, an objection uh, in a capital case that you want to preserve for the record. 
And you know what? It looks like the sidebar is actually over here. Um, so let's go back into court and listen in. Five. Excuse me. Thank you. It's five. The, yeah, the last, thank you. The last um, is sensitive. The last video. We have the sensitive okay. police. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. I said five. Excuse me. I said four, and then I corrected myself. It's uh, states five.
difficult even to listen to that, let alone the, the jury viewing it and let alone having to live through that.